God. Oh, my. Oh, man. You not like it. Nick, do you want to put that scripture up? We have to deal with this first. Hallelujah. Um, I couldn't, I could not get out of uh, Romans chapter 8 verse, uh, this whole chapter, even this morning as I was awakened and uh, went into prayer. Um, but this is for someone or s uh, someone's in this service today. God wants to deal with this in your life so he can move in a greater way. He says, read it with me. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Okay, so it's about walking in the Spirit, isn't it? For the law of the Spirit of life is in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You get that? You got to get this in your soul as a believer, because um, what my little brother here was telling me about going to war. You have to realize this in you. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. So, in other words, God did it all. He sent his son to destroy the works of sin. So don't ever say that, uh, oh, uh, you know, uh, I heard years ago there was a, a comedian who used to say, the devil made me do it. But it's actually your flesh made you do it. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. The key is walking in the spirit to all things that God has given us. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. It's, it's waging war in your mind. You know, they, they put these little bitty runners on ships. And these little bitty runners on these great ships, 900 thousand foot long and in, in, in comparison to the size of the vessel this little rudder just turns this ship i watch many of ships go up and down the river turned by this little rudder so is the tongue a little rudder verse six for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace have been, you have been robbed of peace lately? Because the carnal mind is enmity or enemy against God, for this is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. You understand that? So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. But if indeed the Spirit of God well dwells in you, now if anyone that does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. So there's a definite separation between who's his and who's not. Now, if I consider this his, then I must consider I'm his possession mm -hmm. for him to do what he wills with. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And if Christ is in you, the body, but if Christ, 
Okay. But if the spirit, <laughs> but if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal, mortal bodies. Hallelujah. Come on. Through the spirit who dwells in you. Key. You. Through the spirit, there's a connection. Direct connection of the spirit within you. And this leads into my message, too. <laughs> Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to according to the... Verse 13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Hallelujah. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Personal possession. 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but to receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Father, Father. Come on. Abba. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You've got to have that uh, bearing that witness that you're a child of God. All right, go to verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray, for we ought but the Spirit makes... You get that? God wants you to pray. You should be a praying people. Don't always expect the pastors to be the ones that, even though we do pray for you, intercede for you. Or go to the Lord for your needs. That should be a personal thing between you and God. Amen. You see, what he does with groanings which we cannot, who cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. It ain't your will. Where do we get off with this stuff? And we know that all things work together. For, we love to quote, quote this, huh? Huh? Yeah. We, we remember just this part of that scripture. There's two, two great parts, okay? And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. Again, His purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Go to uh, verse 35. For 34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of the God, <clears throat> who also makes intercession for us. Hello. Hey, got two prayers for me. <laughs> if you don't know Jesus in a personal way, how can he make intercession for you? Go. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. <clears throat> We're going to go through things. We're going to be tried and we're going to be tested for Christ. For His purpose and His glory. 
Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors. You see, if you consider yourself not a warrior, you might as well go to the house. Because you are. You're in war. You're in a war. You're in a war. And if you allow the Lord, the battle is His. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes. Now, now, you dealing with condemnation. I dealt with it. I'm willing to say everyone in this building is either dealing with it or has dealt with it. And if you're dealing with it, let's get it over with. Right now. Come on, because God can't move. Come on, there's no shame. There's no shame. Come on. Come on. Come here, brother. Come on. More have to come. The devil is always going to bring up past. Those images in your mind of the past. When we put those things, when we bury a dead body, it goes in the ground. Do they dig it up? Stop digging it up. Praise the Lord, because it, it's dead. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Father, let her mind be renewed by your word. Hallelujah. Boom. Hallelujah. Wherefore now, there's no condemnation to them. None that are in Christ Jesus and have been called to His purpose. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, cleanse her mind. Cleanse her heart. Lord, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is good, whatsoever is a good report, let her think on these things. Father, I command by the authority of Jesus Christ that devil, your hold is broken in Jesus' name. Now. 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 What's under the blood is under the blood has been cleansed. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank the Lord. I want to say that I'm, I'm honored to be here today and, and uh, to serve you, um, my wife and I. And, uh, We've been looking forward to being here since uh, Pastor Carl um, asked me to come. Hallelujah. But we come as a team. Hallelujah. And we, we've been in prayer, fasting for, for this service and for you, uh, you here today. But I want to bring to you a message. Uh, and I 
she could tell you the story of how this message came about, but I don't want to belabor this. The Lord, our healer. He's our healer. And this is, this. he's been, through the Spirit of God, he's been saying this to me for the last several months. Um, I had dealt with, uh, since I think October or so, September, uh, with, with back issues, and I thought it was um, just just a, uh, you know, tied back or whatever. But uh, what had happened was the pain started going around and started getting worse, and I didn't. I just kept bringing it to the Lord and and asking Him to heal me. So finally, the, uh, at times, the, the pain would, would uh, I, I didn't realize it, but the pain would, would grab me so severely that one of my co-workers noticed that I was, I, I, you know, was in pain. So I decided to go to the doctor. Well, doctors, you know, if anyone needs healing, they, they can go to the physician too. So I went to the physician, so they, they ordered a CT scan and uh, found out that I had uh, uh, kidney stones that were eight millimeter in diameter. And uh, they, they couldn't understand why I was even standing and uh, even in functioning. And I uh, said that it's not possible that you would pass an eight millimeter stone. So, of course, me being me, I, I went to the great physician. So he, uh, my doctor, um, wanted to see me in a follow-up visit. So he says, "Well, during the first visit, he says uh, uh, I want a, I want an X-ray as well because sometimes it doesn't show you the position or anything that these stones are in." They were planning on breaking it up. Yeah. So anyway, I go get an x-ray. I bring the disc to him. And I give the nurse the disc. And I'm waiting in the, in the uh, waiting room. And the doctor finally calls me. The urologist calls me in. And I see him. I, come, I go to his office. I don't go into the, to the patient room. And he's sitting at the, the, the monitor, his computer, looking at, just flipping back and forth, flipping back and forth, flipping back and forth, because he already saw the disc on the, the CT scan. So I, I sense he was puzzled. So he's looking all over and he says, sit down. So he goes through the things. He says, I can't see him. I can't see the, the stones, he says, but you got these something, these little pieces here, somewhere down here. He says, uh, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I said, well, I don't want you to do nothing. <laughs> because I knew my God was going to finish the healing. So he says, well, I'm going to send you for another x-ray. He sends me for another x-ray. So I hadn't gone back to him, but I'm, I looked at the x-ray. There's nothing on the x-ray. Praise the Lord. So I'm, I'm telling you all this to set the tone. My God, he heals. And that's not the first time he healed me. Sure. So, oh, so um, as we were preparing for service this morning and in worship, the Lord speaks to me in worship. In 1 Kings, I want you to go home and read 1 Kings chapter 18. It's a story about Elijah and it was great drought in the land. I feel like many people are in a drought season in their life. Either believe in God for your healing or salvation for loved ones, whatever the case may be. It's a great drive. And 
Elijah, God told Elijah the rain's coming. And he sent his servant. So Elijah goes up on the mountain to look for the rain. Sent the servant to the ocean. He came back. I don't see anything. Seventh time he went out, he said, I, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Elijah went with that. And he told the king to get you on your way because it's about to pour down. Come on. So I believe what the Lord's saying today is it's about to pour down. And the drought is over. The depression is over. Whatever you're going through, the drought is over. Just keep on believing in pressure, but I believe today the drought is over. Come on. Shout somebody. Yeah. Come on, Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you today. Hallelujah. That you've given us all days of life and godliness through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Precious Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We welcome you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this message. This is more of a teaching than a message. The Lord our healer. He so desires to heal us. You know, healing doesn't, it's just not physical. It's emotional. It's our minds. It's our physical. He wants us whole, body, mind, and spirit. You know, I don't know about you, but I've written, uh, I'm not written, but I've read a lot of books on spiritual healing and and uh, divine healing and, and prayer for the sick. Um, I'm reading a book now about intercessory. You know, in case I miss something, I want to know about it. Praise the Lord. Because the Lord spoke to me. He says, what you do in intercessory prayer in secret, he says, I will reward openly. Whoa, come on, Lord. I'm for that. But the... You know, the uh, foundational truth of, of healing ain't, ain't so much of what we have experienced. But it's, it's in the scriptures, the word of God. And uh, it, it, it's a truth about the loving word and the loving kindness and, and being of who God is. And it's everything that's contained in his promises and if you don't read the word if you don't study the word you'll never know his promises and his promises are sure amen. Yes, amen. so uh, isaiah 61 now the lord the lord uh spoke this in luke chapter 4 he quoted the scripture as he as he uh, came up out of the water after his baptism. And look, look what Isaiah prophesied over 850 or so years before Christ came. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. See there? Emotional. To proclaim... Proclaim liberty to the captives. Freedom. Come on. Freedom from everything that you can think of in this world. The things that have you bound. And opening of the prison for those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all those, all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise of the uh, spirit of heaviness. 
You have a heavy spirit this morning? God's going to break that. They, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. You see, the Lord has planted you. And usually, all that I know that I plant plants so that they can grow and produce good fruit. Amen. Alright. You know, it's, it's my belief and, and what the Word says that sick uh, people, uh, believers especially, don't need to remain sick. James 5.14 Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him or her anointing him or her with the oil in the name of the Lord. That's pretty quite clear. You know, if that was a question, then I would have thought that him being a godly man would ask the people who was sick. And if in fact they were sick, then he'd pray over them. But it's a fact that we know that uh, uh, from the fall of man that our bodies occasionally tend to be sick and some even die. Exodus 15:26. look at this. God said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pay attention to His commands and keep all His decrees, I will not bring on you any disease I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. We've got to realize God's our healer. And you know, healing is not just something God does. It's more than that. It's a very part of his nature, who he is. You know, he created us in a perfect state, not to be sick. But you see, because of the fall of man, brought curses and corruption. And back in him, we can be free from the curse. See, God is for us. He ain't against us. Even in the matter of healing. You know, God's heart towards His people is for health and healing. You know, He, he gave the, uh, the uh, some eating laws in Leviticus so that His people would remain healthy. You know, some of that may be good for us. <laughs> Exodus 23, 25, and uh, 26 says, uh, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or barrenness in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Come on. Deuteronomy, I'm going to give you a lot of scripture today. So uh, if, if you want the scriptures, I can uh, even leave them. Uh, I'll, I'll send them to you, whatever. In a list. Deuteronomy uh, 7, 11, 12, it says, and 15, it says, Therefore take care to follow the commands, decrees, and the laws I give you today. If you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he swore to your forefathers. Verse 15, the, the Lord will keep you free from disease. He will not inflict on you the horrible diseases uh, you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all who hate you. Wow. You know that was in there? Yep. Acts 10.38 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all that were under the power of the devil because God was with him. You know, Jesus still heals today. I know he does. It's a fact. 
God's healing power is extended to all to all our diseases, not just one, all our infirmities. Yeah. Psalms 103, uh, 2 and 3 says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. See, David prayed that. David was sick in his body. But you know, and this is what the Lord spoke to me this morning. The battle is in our minds between the reality of, in, of the infirmity and the reality of God's word, which says we're healed. We have to realize in our spirit man, our spirit man already knows that, the Holy Spirit in us knows that, but we got to get it in our spirit, man, that the reality of God's word is true. And it will heal, heal us. That's a fact. The other uh, reality is that, that I know is that God has a plan for me. And he wants to fulfill that plan in me and through me. You see, the devil doesn't want that to happen. So he'll do everything in his power to disrupt the plan of God in your life. Don't let him. You see, he'll, he, God will allow him to test you to see how much you, you want God's will to be done in your life. How much do you want God's will to be done in your life? How much do you want to please him? How much do you want to praise him? You know, the greatest of all the Lord's benefits is that he, he forgives our sins. You realize that? The psalmist, he had charged us in, the, in Psalms 103 not to forget another one of the Lord's promises, his benefits. You gotta understand. How many of you look for a job with benefits? Hello. I don't just want an hourly salary. I want benefits. God's word has benefits. Being in Christ Jesus has benefits. You see, Jesus, because Jesus died for both sin and sickness, not just for one. He did, look, Isaiah 53, 5. This, again, Isaiah prophesied before, even before this took place. The things that would, Jesus would go through. Look, look what he went through. Verse, uh, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our pain sufferings yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted you get that but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed all healed. All healed. You know what I look at? It? You know, whether in this life I'm healed, which I know God wants me healed, the ultimate healing is when I put down the flesh and I have a new body. No more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pain. I love this, 1 Peter 2.24. He says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed. You have been healed. Notice the difference. You are healed and you have been healed. 
Past tense. Done. His, he was scourged. He was whipped at his crucifixion so that we, by his wounds, we have been healed. Do you realize what he bore at that whipping post? Don't waste it. Don't waste it. He did it for you. He did it for me. Don't waste it. Don't waste what God has given you in His Word. Notice when you read the Word, Jesus cried out from the cross that's finished. Sin has been overcome. Sickness had been overcome. It was done. It was finished. Done. We must come to the place where we believe with confidence that God will respond to our prayer for healing. He did for me on more, more than one occasion. My mother was sick with cancer. I mean, she was full of cancer. Gave us six months to live. That wasn't a good answer for what I heard. So, my wife will tell you, prayer and fasting, that's all I knew. God's Word, prayer and fasting. Went to prayer, went to fasting. Um, they, they gave a couple of chemo tr treatments, but he said that would just only prolong your life, maybe six months to a year. Okay, God. That means God's got time. All right. So they see she's improving. So they go and they say, "Well, we're going to do a hysterectomy because she had ovarian cancer, which was all in her abdomen." So they went, had the surgery. We're all in the, my siblings and I, my dad. We're all in the waiting room, uh, oncologists and the uh, uh, gynecologists, both female doctors, came out of the uh, surgery to the waiting room. My dad standing there, all my brothers and sisters, my brothers and sister. And uh, the doctor came up to me. She came straight to me, looked me in the face, pulled off her cap. Masters. I don't understand it. <laughs> Looks like she's never had it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he he stood. Pulled her holster. I'm telling you, there's no obstacle. No mountain too great. For God to move. Genesis 20, verse 17 and 18 says, Abraham prayed to God. You see, we have many examples of, of the uh, men and women of God praying. So Abraham prayed, prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his slave girls, who, so that they could have children again, for the Lord had closed up every womb in Abimelech's household because of Abraham's wife Sarah. You see, this king didn't know that uh, Sarah was Abraham's wife, so he wanted to take her into his harem. And so he, he had this little dream. And God told him, don't you touch this woman. So, because he did what he did, God actually kept his him from having children, or his, his, his concubine, whatever you want to call it. But Abraham verbally knew, so he prayed 
and God released, forgave. So the Lord healed her. Each one of them healed him, healed her, and, and the whole court. And he got out of there. <laughs> David understood stood the power of prayer. He he prayed many a times, and in, in, in the in Psalms we we collect his prayers. And he says in Psalms thirty, says, "O oh Lord my God, I cry out to you." And you heal. God still heals today. Then we move to the New Testament. Where we find that Jesus healed also. Jesus taught this in Matthew 21, 22. And he says, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Believing. Sometimes that, that's a little easier uh, said than done. Because we see the circumstances, we know the circumstances, and the circumstances of this world tell us different. But then we, we go to God's Word, and it's like a tug of war that's going on in our minds and our hearts. What God's Word says contradicts what the world says. So what's stronger? Either the Word of God or the world's Word. So God is okay with our emotional uh, prayers of healing for healing. In 2 Kings gives you this example, 2 Kings chapter 20 verses 1 through 5 where Hezekiah was sick you know, the, the prophet goes to him and tells him, you know, get your house in order, brother. You're going to die. So, here's what Hezekiah does. In those days, Hezekiah was, a sick, was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him with, and, and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order. For you shall die and not live. Boy, what an indictment. You know, many are, are faced with, with the same type of situation where the doctor tells them, get your affairs in order. That's what, he, that's what the doctor told my mother. Get your affairs in order because you, you're not going to live. But guess what? I knew different. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept wept bitterly. And it happened before Isaiah that had gone uh, out into the middle of court. In other words, gave him the message. Isaiah walks out, and he hadn't got out of the king's courtyard, and, and the Lord tells him, the word came to him saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I, will, I have heard your prayer. I, I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the, uh, on the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord. The reason why he went up to the house of the Lord because he acknowledged his healing and he gave God glory and honor for what had done, been done. Jesus healed every sickness and disease that there was. Matthew 4, 23 and 24. Jesus went through, throughout Galilee teaching their, in their synagogue, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread over Syria and the people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, 
the demon possessed, those having seizures, and paralyzed, and he healed them. So if you figure that Jesus healed them while he walked this earth, why won't he heal them now? All types. Christ's power is without limit. Hey, hallelujah, all power. Heaven and earth. Hey, hallelujah. Help me, Lord. Help me. So he, he, he healed those that were of various disease, suffering severe pain, the, the demon possessed, having seizures, those that were paralyzed. Come on. Ooh. Obvious diseases. So we don't bring anything that has not been done before to Jesus. So don't hesitate to bring your healing needs to Jesus. Because in his ministry, he is willing to heal all those that come to him in faith. Praise the Lord. So, we believing in the Lord for divine healing, we need to have faith in his power and his willingness to be healed. Okay? Matthew chapter 9, verses 20. Through 22 says that suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood. We all, how many has heard this this story before? She had a, uh, uh, a flow of blood for 12 years, came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. She, for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. We have to have faith. You see, when our faith connects with God, it's done. God sees it. God hears Hezekiah right away. He'll hear us right away. God, uh, uh, instantly Jesus knew he was touched. We have to touch him. Mm. We have to touch him. <clears throat> Matthew 9, 27 through 30. When Jesus stood parted from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he, he had come into the house, the blind man came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be done. Let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. Notice Jesus, when he came to Jesus, he didn't do it right away. They followed him. They followed him into the house. And him seeing their faith, you see, they didn't give up by obstacles or doors or anything like that. Distances. He didn't give up. They didn't give up. Hebrews 11 tells us that without faith, it's just impossible to please God. So God expects us in prayer to believe Him. Believe His Word. To have faith in Him. We have to have faith in it. Plain and simple. You know, and, and God may ask us to uh, demonstrate our faith for that spiritual healing. Because I, I consider it spiritual healing. Matthew 12, 10 and 13. It says, And a man was, was, with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. So he stretched out it, and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other one. You see, there's the demonstration of him acting upon what Jesus had told him to do. Stretch out your hand. Healing comes through faith in Jesus, not faith in faith. 
faith in Jesus. Acts 3.16 By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see now. You see, this is, this is one of my favorite scriptures in Acts chapter 3 where uh, Peter, they, they were going to the temple. And it says, this whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can see. You see, there was a demonstration. The man was, was obviously lame, crippled, and he was waiting, begging at the gate. He didn't expect someone uh, like a disciple to come along and say, you know, I don't have any silver or gold, but such as I have, I give unto you. Do you have the goods? Do you have the goods? Yeah, I got it. Oh, I got All the right. problem. Come on. <laughs> you got to have the goods. Hallelujah. And don't, Jesus there's no man. substitution. I'm going to tell you right now, there's no substitution for praying in the Holy Ghost. Believe in God. Hallelujah. And having a relationship, intimate relationship with the Lord. If you're going to do things for the Lord, you've got to have that first. Yes. How bad do you want? Yes. It's up to you. It's going to cost you something. So healing comes uh, by faith in. Someone named Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. You know, it, it, you know, many people think faith healing is, is, is just believing in a doctrine or healing. The true doctrine is, is believing in the healer. The person. Jesus Christ. He's the one that actually purchased your salvation and by his stripes you've been healed. Amen. So faith, by faith in the name of Jesus, it's Jesus' name, it is faith that comes through him alone. Luke 17, 12 through 14. As he was going into the village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out, in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Why did they stand at a distance? Because they were unclean. And they knew they couldn't come to the rabbi, to Jesus, and contaminate him. But look what Jesus does. Because leprosy was transmitted by contact. So when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. As they came, as they they went, they were cleansed. So just the word spoken by Jesus. But you, you got to look that only nine came back. How many came back? One. One. Not even ten, one came back. You know, the, if you think about it, the healing didn't come at that moment. The healing came as they acted out and did in what was in obedience. So, many times we may need to walk for a while in faith. Then our healing comes. There are times when uh, God, uh, the Lord instantaneously heals, but uh, be willing. We have to be willing to main, maintain and be steadfast uh, in faith for healing. And don't be discouraged if it doesn't immediately take place. Don't pray, then doubt. 
Don't pray, then doubt. James 1, 6 and 7 says, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. So ask the Lord for healing and don't waver. God is true. His word is true. So you got to doubt your doubts. <laughs> and don't doubt that God is true. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to finish with this. 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 And we'll go through this real quickly. There's ten different ways from, from the Bible, the way that uh, there's healing administered in the Bible. The first way is by prayer, as we have already seen, right? We've seen the prayer. Two is by a spoken word. Jesus spoke the word. Um, I'm not going to go through the examples in prayer because the time's getting away from them, but you can look in John chapter 4, verses 49 through 51, where Jesus told the uh, nobleman um, about his sick child dying. Jesus spoke the word. Um, the third one was by laying on of hands, which we're, we're going to do at the end of the service. I want to read that one in Acts chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. It says, Now there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias? And he said, Here am I. Here I am, Lord. I've heard that voice before. And uh, so the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for uh, behold, he is praying. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. He arose and was baptized. Hallelujah. Starting of his ministry. Um, the fourth way is filling the, the needy person's heart with faith building, life giving word of God. We have to get the Word of God in our hearts. Proverbs 20, uh, uh, 420 says, My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life uh, to, to those who find them and healing to your whole body. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Fifth way, uh, healing by prayer cloths. And we know that uh, uh, Peter, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, had prayer cloths, aprons, and they, they, they laid them on people and they were healed. Um, six, a very heart contributes to receiving spiritual healing. You heard what I said? Yes. Proverbs 17, 22, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. The seventh way there is healing in the uh, Lord's Supper, communion. The Lord tells us in, uh, there that we should search our hearts. But if we search our hearts doing that, if we find anything wrong, we confess and get it before we take the, the bread and the communion. So if, if we need to search our hearts at that particular time to keep from eating uh, in a wrong manner, 
then I believe uh, all that would, had taken place uh, uh, at Christ, that if we do in remembrance, those things that we remember he did at Calvary, then our wounds have been healed. Okay? The eighth way is by calling the elders of the church to lay hands on it uh, and uh, anoint with oil and pray for you. The ninth way is in, in some instances divine healing comes uh, as demons are driven out. We've seen that happen in the scriptures as well. The tenth way is uh, sometimes healing comes from what would seem to be uh, rather unusual, even remarkable methods. Um, as the apostles did in, in uh, you know, get up and he healed. But I want to close with this. God's heart is for healing. It's a benefit. As forgiveness of sin is a benefit. If you can believe that you've been saved and believed uh, by believing, from your sins, that it should be just as easy to believe when you heal. Same faith. Hallelujah. Jesus healed again and again and again in, in the, in, in, while he walked this earth. You know, and the word tells me, tells me that God is the same yesterday, today is forever. So his, his mind hasn't changed about healing. Jesus has entrusted the church to his healing ministry. He's given us gifts that we, we, we edify the body of believers with. He endowed a specific gift, uh, a gift of healing. And in Psalms 103, I'll end with this, verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, forget not, forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Would you stand? You know, first order of business, are you right with the Lord today? Is there something in your life that is keeping you from the fullness of what God has intended you to live. If that's you, step out from where you are. We're going to deal with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, God wants to work. He doesn't want any obstructions. He doesn't want any hindrances. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The next call is for healing. Hallelujah. You have a need in your life. Maybe healing of your physical body. Maybe healing healing of the emotions. It may be something to do with a relationship. It may be unforgiveness. financial needs.
Come on, there's room in, the, in, the, in this house. Come on. Just lift your hands as a sign of surrender. God wants to heal. Young step forward a little bit. Hallelujah. I don't bite. Lord said to James, he said, call for the elders of the church. Shall anoint you with oil. Your sins shall be forgiven. You shall be healed in Jesus' name. 